A good starting point for getting your head around the GBA is to talk about the role of the four components, the four major components of the GBA. I'm going to start at the bottom with the gut. So when we talk about the gut, we're talking about the GIT, the gastrointestinal tract, which is made up of a bunch of different organs that we know plays a key role in digestion synthesizing key proteins for, that we extract from our food. Second function of our gut that we don't think about as much, but it's kind of intuitive. Our gut's role in our immune spot response and regulating our immune system to keep us physically healthy. But what we really want to focus on here in terms of the GBA axis is the role of the gut in producing key neurotransmitters and neuromodulators that regulate our mental health. So let's zoom in a bit and look at the second component of our GBA. And that's the microbiota that resides in your gut. Now, the microbiota is referring to the thousands of different types of micro bio, um, microorganisms that exist in our gut, mainly made up of bacteria, a mixture of good bacteria, and also bad bacteria, which could make us ill. But in terms of the good bacteria in there, this plays a key role in the production of those neurotransmitters and neuromodulators that I was referring to, such as GABA, dopamine, and serotonin. And so the good bacteria that's responsible for the production of these neurochemicals basically is extracted from prebiotics, probiotics, and a well-balanced diet. So we get the diversity of those microorganisms of that bacteria so that we can generate, generate adequate levels of those key neurotrans, um, neurochemicals that regulate our mental health. So then we look at the third component, the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve, one of the biggest nerves in your body, it basically is the pathway between your uh, gut and your brain. So it's got a, an efferent pathway um, for passing on um, information, motor information from the brain down to the gut. But more importantly, you could argue about 90% of the actual communication between the GBA is afferent from the gut to the brain. And we'll look at that a bit later. All righty. Fourth component. Let's look at the brain. So again, gut-brain axis. The key essence of this topic is to basically look at how um, the bi-directional communication occurs between the gut and the brain and how the brain can affect gut health and gut health can affect the brain. So in terms of that bidirectional communication that we were referring to, let's focus at the bottom. So as I talked about before, when we have good uh, diversity in terms of our gut microbiota based on, on a balanced diet with diversity in terms of that bacteria, then the basically the vagus nerve uh, will have afferent signals in terms of those neurotransmitters produced in the gut, and they'll travel up into the brain and do their magic in terms of well-being. Now, if we have a, um, an impaired diet, then obviously that's going to compromise that. And so therefore, if there's a lack of diversity, that can have a detrimental effect on our well-being because there's an, an inadequate balance of those key neurotransmitters that regulate our well-being. But what about the other way around? Let's look at the brain. So the brain is basically where we process stress. So if we're under chronic stress, then that's going to trigger a release of high levels of cortisol, which we'll look at um, in other aspects of the first area study in Unit 3. And high levels of cortisol are basically going to impact um, efferently the composition of our gut bacteria. And so this is where the brain is having a detrimental effect on the microbiota in the gut because chronic stress 
can basically disrupt some of the activity that's occurring in our gut. So in essence, the key fat facet of this is students need to be able to explain how the gut affects the brain. And so we put emphasis on the fact that the gut is made up of microbiota. The microbiota produces key neurotransmitters and neurohormones. These neurotransmitters and neurohormones are conveyed via the vagus nerve and reach the brain. And then when we have a healthy balance of these, then we'll, have, we'll be more resilient. In terms of the brain, if we're under stress, then cortisol will basically uh, impact the gut bacteria, the gut microbiota, which can have a detrimental effect on our physical health and make us vulnerable to various disorders, such as acute ones like an upset stomach, to more chronic um, forms of illness, such as irritable bowel syndrome, etc.